Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. So as you guys know, I deal with a lot of different customers, players, every day, right? What are the most annoying ones to me? Well, I'm going to tell you today. Stay tuned. Before I go into my long day and having to deal with stupid questions, um, I'm going to take a slug of coffee. Guys, thank you so much for supporting my coffee habit. It keeps me up and uh, keeps me pretty happy. So thank you in advance. If you want to support my habit, buy me a coffee backslash tennis spin. Link is below. Thank you in advance. All right, guys. So you guys know that I probably have to deal with a myriad of people here. And I would say 90 something percent are super pleasant, super nice, um, you know, love seeing them. It's like cheers. People call me Sam Malone. You know, they want to hang out here and talk to me and, you know, shoot the tennis. And, and I totally don't mind that. And I actually love to talk shop. But there are those types that pretty much just drive me up the wall. And I'm gonna give you some samples of those people or examples of those people right now. I might actually give you the example of one right now. Hey, how's it going? What's the best racket here? Uh, they're all good. No, but what's the best racket here? Do you mean the most expensive or do you mean the best racket for you? Or what are you talking about? Oh, what's just the best? The best. Okay, so what do I do? I just, I could pick the Roger, right? Or I could pick a Clash or I could pick a whatever. So let's just say I say the Roger, okay? The guy's um, athletic, right? And I was like, well, this is probably the best racket. Um, but what's so good about it? Roger uses it. He does? Well, maybe I should get it then. But what is the difference between this and uh, and this racket here? All right. So you're basically coming in to just kind of really shoot the, sh shoot the crap. And I don't know where you're heading with this. So there's kind of no focus. You probably just walked by the shop and saw that there was a tennis shop. And you decided to waste my time. So hopefully, right, you walk out here with a racket, but um, most of the time you just want to literally shoot the, shoot, shoot the crap, okay? So that kind of drives me crazy because I don't mind that, but when we start going down this, this snowball on a mountain, um, the questions don't end. Like we go from this and then we go to, oh, what does Rafa use? What does Novak use? Just because you know these people's names and, and I tell them what rackets they use doesn't mean anything to you. The problem, the problem actually is you're not listening to me. I mean, it's like you just want to talk just to talk. And when I talk, you're probably not listening. So that's one of the most annoying customers is, I mean, if you walk out with a racket, great. But I probably had to spend like, 30 minutes with you to uh to get you out of here so which i don't mind i don't mind but um as long as you're listening to me and i can educate you and you're just not talking just to talk right you know that person you probably have a friend that's that person so hopefully you're not that person uh and then the other one is the problem solver right they they get a, they bring a string job in and they're like, this didn't work for me, but they want to solve it right now, and it's like, oh, this broke too fast. Well, we're gonna have to put something a little thicker on. What's that gonna do for me? It's gonna buy you more durability. What's the downside of that? It's gonna be a little stiffer. Is there something else? Like, well, either 
It's durability or playability. But I feel like they want the best solution right now. So this is the time that you need to check yourself because you think you know yourself, you talk like you know, but you really don't. That's the thing. And you're like, your brain is like going like this and you're just talking just to buy yourself time because um, there isn't a right solution right now because at this point, you should probably just test something else, but you want the perfect strength right now that will basically be the be all that ends all. But that's actually not how tennis works. Tennis is always a trial and error. It's like going to a therapist, man. You know, you, you don't go once and get cured. You know, you know, no offense, but it's like you go once, you know, you sit there, you do your thing, right? So I feel like I'm the therapist and you're talking to me and I'm listening to you, but are you listening to yourself? Because I'm listening to you and then when I talk, you ain't listening to me. You get that? Well, I hope so, but a lot of, you know, people say tennis players are neurotic. That's true. You know, everybody's like trying to find the the pot of gold. Everybody's trying to find the tennis fountain of youth. You know, it, it, it kind of doesn't exist. I mean, and even when it does, it only lasts for like maybe one day because when everything comes together, you play the best, right? Oh, I want that feeling again. But it is hard to get that feeling again because we're expecting our racket to perform, our strings to perform, you to perform. And for all that to come together, you know, it doesn't even come together for the pros. So it is tough to ask for that. So guys, there is no such thing as solution solving right now. That's the thing. We can't, you can't come in and expect perfection right now without some type of trial and error. Like, this is why people have multiple rackets. I mean, the people who play a lot, they have four or five rackets and they're all different because it depends on the day. Some days you're great with this racket, some days you're great with that racket, but sometimes you just need a change right? Sometimes you, you know, that's why when people come in and they ask for the perfect setup, the perfect setup. Well, that could be perfect for literally one outing. And then what happens, right? You need a different feel on the next one, possibly. But it, it's, you know, what I'm trying to tell you is there is no such thing as perfect tennis is a game of mistakes so and we cannot um basically answer all the questions in one city because you have to essentially try things so at the end of so at the end of it all i mean sometimes i just have to take evasive action and kind of take control of the situation and this is when i take the racket and no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but sometimes I kind of have to be a little aggressive and say, this is what you need, you know, and this is how it needs to be done. And you'll like it. And I would say about 97% of the time I'm right. Um, I just, they just needed a little nudge or, or a little kick off the, the, the ledge, you know, just so that they can just clear their brain and get focused again. Because sometimes when they're talking, it's just, it's like spiral fibers, you know? Where are we at here? Where are we at? You know? So maybe do a little research before you walk in. Um, but definitely, you know, trial and error. Test the strings. Test the rackets with the strings. Test the tensions, right? Go thinner, go thicker. You know, there's no right answer. All right. And the last customer that I literally adore, but... Um, are kind of out in space. Um, I got grandma coming in or the mother coming in and they're like, oh, my kid's gonna be the next Roger Federer or Novak Djokovic. I'm like, oh, great. Um, 
How old is he? Oh, he's eight. Does he play? No. He's like, but he's so good. He runs around good and he hits things and you know he doesn't miss the the lemons in in the in the yard with a with a baseball bat. Okay, great. How can I help you today? You know, so I have to manage expectations too, guys, because everybody thinks that, you know, tennis is an easy game, you know, like Wimbledon is on right now and Wimbledon inspires people to play. And for some reason, people who are couch potatoes watching tennis, especially Wimbledon, because it's like, you know, the, the number one slam that everybody likes to watch. Oh, that's easy. I can play that. You know, it's kind of like Bob Ross. You guys know who Bob Ross is? You know, that painter with the fro? You know, he makes painting look so easy so that everybody thinks that they can paint like him. And he makes it, he teaches you like, oh, this is, you know, you can paint a masterpiece, right? You can play tennis like a pro. And people come in, yeah, who are beginners. Oh yeah, I'm a I'm a I'm a intermediate player. You play right? You ever play before? Oh yeah, I used to play when I was little. You know, like, okay, suddenly you intermediate again. Okay, I get it. Got that Bob Ross moment, you know. And I'm gonna have to talk you out of ledge and sell you a, well, sell you a real racket, okay? But those are the three types of customers that I kind of have to deal with um, on a deal on a daily basis. Um, I understand, you know, I've been in the business long enough. So, but um, just so you understand that I understand that, uh, that I know you and I see when you walk in with that big head of yours. Guys, I got someone to introduce you to. This is Intern Cass, and he is gonna take you out today. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.